Hey everybody, welcome to the Monday, December 23rd, 2019 edition of Tesla Daily, unofficial Tesla podcast. My name is Rob Maurer. Today we are talking about Tesla's most recent firmware update, including some of the features that Elon had previously referred to, a new $1.4 billion debt facility for Tesla, and a major investment in Rivian. Tesla stock on the day today, another strong day, finishing up 3.4% to $419.22, which compared to the NASDAQ up 0.2%. Of course, at times today, Tesla did cross the infamous $420 per share price level, a level that became noteworthy due to Elon's funding secured tweets last August. So Elon having a bit of fun on Twitter today saying, quote, whoa, the stock price is so high, lol, end quote. I had pointed out that that $420 level may be a bit of a barrier due to that tweet, and it looks like that came to fruition today. The other level that could have been a bit of a psychological barrier was that $400 level, and Tesla blew right through that, so I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see this be a short hang-up as well. But we do have a couple of weird sort of trading days here. The markets close early tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, for Christmas Eve, and then the day after, the markets will be closed for Christmas Day, reopening on Thursday. I think that midweek close just adds even more intrigue to the trading that we're seeing happening with Tesla right now. It's certainly very interesting. And all of a sudden, we are now within basically less than a normal trading week number of days before we should get the Q4 delivery and production numbers. That should happen either on January 2nd or January 3rd, meaning we're looking at four and a half or five and a half trading days from now until those numbers come out. So I'd say it's pretty reasonable to expect things to continue to be volatile. One other just quick fun fact that I wanted to point out on the stock price. As the market cap sits today just above $75 billion, Tesla's market cap has increased over the last six months by about $44 billion. That's more than the entire market cap of Ford. That just adds some, I think, perspective to how incredible this rise has been and maybe some perspective to be a little bit cautious at this time, though I do remain very bullish and I actually did make some bullish trades myself today. As I said on Friday's episode, I would have liked to have done that on Friday. Certainly that would have been better timing, but hopefully I'm not too late. All right, so let's get into the news. Tesla today started rolling out the 2019.40.50 firmware update to some early access release program members. And this does appear to be the update that has the full self-driving sneak peek. And it may not be as exciting as we had hoped for, but I think good reason to be excited as well. So the release notes say, quote, the driving visualization can now display additional objects, which include stoplights, stop signs, and select road markings. The stop sign and stoplight visualizations are not a substitute for an attentive driver and will not stop the car. To see these additional objects in your driving visualization, tap controls, autopilot, full self-driving visualization preview, end quote. So this preview does require hardware 3. It's not going to be activated on hardware 2.0 or 2.5. Elon on Twitter said, quote, regarding 2.x to 3 hardware update, that should happen in earnest in Q1. Software feature delta was zero until now, so not much point in doing it before then, end quote. In terms of this actual update, probably not what everyone hoped the sneak peek would be in terms of just being visualization. There are some rumors going around that maybe Some subset of early access has a little bit more functionality. I haven't been able to confirm that myself, so we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. But even if it is just the visualization at this point, I think that's still a very exciting feature because that's going to give us a sense for how well the full self-driving suite is perceiving and understanding its surroundings. And perception is the huge first step in making a functional full self-driving suite. Lex Friedman on his podcast with Elon Musk last month actually asked, quote, what's harder, perception or control for these problems, end quote. And Elon responded by saying, quote, the hardest thing is having accurate representation of the physical objects in vector space, end quote. Then adding, quote, once you have an accurate vector space representation, the planning and control is relatively easier. I'd say it's relatively easy, end quote, emphasizing relatively. He then went on to explain that once you have that accurate representation, the problem solving becomes much more like a video game, and I'm sure that's an oversimplification. Certainly, the planning and control is a difficult problem by itself, but as Elon said, the perception is harder, and now we're going to get a chance to see how Tesla's doing on that front. Now, there's a chance that it may not accurately represent everything on the screen, 
that it sees. For example, stoplights and stop signs have been hidden in the code for a long time, not necessarily doing anything, but they have been there at times. But if this is truly a full self-driving preview visualization, then presumably it will be showing everything that it understands. So even without those controlling and planning elements, while it would be awesome if they were there, obviously, it's still going to give us a lot of insight into how Tesla is progressing with full self-driving. I mean, this is one of the things that Matt and I talked about on that episode a couple of days ago. The visualizations, even for just autopilot, are dramatically improved from where they were a year ago, and now we get to see the next step in that process. While that in and of itself is super exciting, this isn't the only update in this release. They've also added, or adjusted rather, voice commands, saying, quote, voice commands have been rebuilt to understand natural language. For this initial release, we focused on commands that minimize having to touch the screen so you can keep your eyes on the road, end quote. They then give a few examples, such as set the temperature to 70 degrees, or let's go to work, or search for Joe Rogan podcast or Tesla Daily podcast or things like show me the rear camera. So personally, I don't have much experience with the voice commands, but hopefully this is a nice update. This firmware also includes the ability to read and respond to text messages using the scroll wheel on the steering wheel. Quote, when a new message is received, press the right scroll wheel button to have your text message read out loud and press again to respond by speaking out loud, end quote. Tesla has also added the streaming service Twitch to the Tesla theater. So that'll be available with this release as well as the game Stardew Valley. I don't see anything in here about Lost Backgammon, so I'm not sure if that fell out or if that would be to come later. And then a big update here is Camp Mode. Tesla says, quote, Your car can now maintain airflow, temperature, interior lighting, as well as play music and power devices when Camp Mode is enabled. To enable Camp Mode, tap the fan icon at the bottom of the touchscreen and set Keep Climate On to Camp while your car is in park. Big batteries rock, end quote. Really happy to see this added. That's one that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. All right, next up today, Reuters is reporting that, quote, U.S. electric vehicle maker Tesla Inc. and a group of China banks have agreed to a new 10 billion U.N., 1.4 billion U.S. dollars, five-year loan facility for the automaker's Shanghai car plant. Three sources familiar with the matter said, part of which will be used to roll over an existing loan, end quote. That previous loan was for 3.5 billion UN, so if I understand this correctly, subtracting that out would add about 900 million US dollars to Tesla's available debt from this facility. Again, from Reuters, quote, the new loan's interest rate will be pegged at 90% of China's one year benchmark interest rate, the same as the 3.5 billion UN loan, the first source said. This is a rate that China banks offer to their best clients, end quote. It looks like that one-year rate right now is 4.15%, so 90% of that would be 3.735% interest rate for Tesla on this loan facility. Since this is being reported by Reuters right now, we don't have the full information from Tesla on this deal, so I'm not sure if they'll actually take all of that available debt up front or if they'll use that more as a line of credit. So I think we'll have to wait for the final details on that, but the point here is that Tesla has access to a significant amount of capital at a very low interest rate. That's a really good thing because through Q3 this year, Tesla has already paid slightly over half a billion dollars in interest expense on debt. So the lower the interest rate they can get on that, the better. Though obviously the net effect of adding any debt would cause those interest expenses to increase unless they use that to retire more expensive debt, which doesn't sound like it's the case from this Reuters report. But I think in general, Tesla's paying like 6 to 7% on their debt. Don't quote me on that because I haven't actually looked that up. That's just going from memory. Either way, it looks like Tesla has good access to capital in China. That's a good thing. And as we talked about a couple days ago as well, if Tesla needed to do a capital raise with a $75 billion market cap, it could raise significant amounts of money without all that much dilution. I mean, if they can get billions of dollars at a 3.75% interest rate, I think that's probably preferable to any dilution, but if they wanted to, a billion dollar cap raise would only be about 1.3% dilution. Speaking of capital raises, TechCrunch today is reporting that Rivian has yet again raised capital, $1.3 billion this time. This is the fourth significant cap raise for Rivian this year, following rounds of $700 million, $500 million, and $350 million earlier this year. So a total of $2.85 billion year to date. That is some serious capital, especially to be added to on the heels of the Cybertruck 
unveiling. This $1.3 billion round reportedly includes investments from Amazon and Ford, previous investors, as well as T. Rowe Price and BlackRock. I've always felt relatively positive on Rivian's potential up until sort of the Cybertruck event. I think it's just going to be really tough to compete with the specs of the Cybertruck. I mean, the Rivian R1T pickup starts at 69,000, which you can get a 500 mile tri motor Cybertruck with the supercharger network and Tesla's autonomy suite. That's going to be really tough for Rivian to compete with, I think. Now, they do have the order from Amazon for up to 100,000 delivery vans. So I think at some point, you've got to start to wonder if Rivian starts to pivot away from directly competing in a market that Tesla is playing in to one that they are not quite in yet. That seemed to be sort of the original strategy with the R1T. And certainly there's still some market left for that as it doesn't look like a Cybertruck and that's going to be a plus for some group of people. But it seems like as you're getting to scale, that delivery van option might be the easier path. It would certainly seem to simplify production, but maybe they can't quite make the cost work on that without the volume from the R1T and the R1S. So now that Rivian has all this capital, it's going to be interesting to see how they progress over this next year. Definitely rooting for Rivian. Hopefully they can at least get something to production. Lastly today, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that BMW is under investigation by the SEC. BMW confirmed that they have been contacted and will, quote, cooperate fully with their investigation, end quote. The Wall Street Journal says, quote, the regulator is looking into whether the Munich-based automaker engaged in a practice known as sales punching in the U.S., the people said. Sale punching occurs when a company boosts sales figures by having dealers register cars as sold when the vehicles actually are still standing on car lots, end quote. The SEC had previously investigated Fiat Chrysler for doing something similar. Fiat Chrysler settled that case for about $40 million in September, and they went back and revised their historical sales. I feel like every time we have a story like this, I should just start keeping track of it. I mean, how many times have we talked about issues like this with the automakers the last couple of years? Anyway, just a quick note on scheduling before we wrap it up for today. I'm not 100% certain what my schedule will be over the next few days. I'm going to spend some time here with my family. Still try to record the podcast if anything major is happening. Tomorrow we are supposed to get updated short interest, so I'll do my best to get to that, and the rest will just have to play by ear, so thank you for your patience on that. As always, thank you all for listening. I hope you all have an amazing holiday season. Stay in touch on Twitter at Tesla Podcast via email at teslaDailyPodcast at gmail.com. And of course, if you want to support the podcast, you can find those details at patreon.com slash Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Thank you.